So let's discuss the moments of the upper limb. We basically have three joints in the upper limb. One is the shoulder joint, then you have the elbow joint, and we have the wrist joint. I'm not going into the details of their articulation. We will be discussing this one by one. We'll be studying about the anatomy of the upper limb. So mainly, I just want to give you a concept of the movements which are taking place at the upper, upper limb, especially the arm. So we have a flexion moment like this. This is the full flexion of the arm, right? This is the flexion at some degrees, maybe 20 or 30 degree. And this is the full flexion, which is almost the 90 degree flexion. And then we have the extension moment, right? This is the full extension. So the, if we talk about both the arms, this is the flexion moment. And then you have the full extension moment of the arm. Flexion, extension. Flexion, extension, mainly taking place at the shoulder joint and mainly taking place at the elbow joint. Then other uh, movements at the, um, at the upper arm. So we are basically more concerned about the adduction. It's been adding your limb to the body like this, okay? So this is adduction when you are just, uh, you know, converging your arms to your uh, main median part of the body. So this is abduction, this is, this is adduction, Okay, and this is abduction, taking your arm away from the body. So when you're taking arm away from the body, this is abduction and this is adduction. Abduction, adduction. I'm gonna repeat again, flexion, extension, flexion, extension. Then you have abduction and then adduction. Abduction, adduction. A adduction is like adding to the body, right? So this is adduction, abduction, flexion, and then extension, right? Then you have internal rotation and the external rotation as well. So when you talk about the internal rotation, flex your arm like this, and this is internal rotation. This is external rotation, okay? In a flexion position. So again, this is internal rotation. When, you, when your body in a, is in a flexed position or your arm is in a flexed position and you're taking it towards your body, so that is the internal rotation and this is the external rotation. Internal rotation and the external rotation. So I'm gonna repeat all the movements. This is the flexion, simple flexion moment, simple extension moment. Then this is the abduction, taking your limb away from the body an adduction in which you're taking your limb towards the body. And then you have the internal rotation. This is internal rotation, and this is external rotation. Once again, internal rotation, and then external rotation. So we have two more important, um, uh, you know, positions, which are uh, movements which are taking, class, uh, taking place at the shoulder joint. Not only on the shoulder joint, but the mandible as well. So one is a protraction, another is called as a retraction. When you're bending your, or moving your shoulder forward, so that is a protraction. And when you're moving your shoulder backwards, so that would be retraction, just like this. I'm, I'm bending my shoulder forward, so this is protraction, and now I'm bending my shoulder backwards, this is retraction. So this is protraction and retraction. Protraction and retraction. So that's the same with the mandible as well. Okay, so for the mandible, it's like protraction is like this. See, I'm, I'm, I'm moving my jaw forward, this is protraction, and when I'm bringing back to its place, this is retraction. Protraction, retraction. So circumduction is the combination of all the moments, and uh, usually circumduction takes place at the shoulder joint. So this is the circumduction, right? When you're moving your arm in a circular motion. So this is called as a combination of flexion, extension, um, internal rotation, external rotation. So this is the circumduction like this, okay? Now, when you talk about the moments of the hand, so we have four important moments, which are the supination, pronation, and then you have the abduction and adduction. So this is the supination when your palms are facing towards the sky or towards the upper surface, this is the supination. When your palms are facing downward, this is called as pronation. So this is supination, palms facing upward, 
This is pronation in which the palms facing downward. This is the palmar surface of the hand, okay? And this is the dorsal surface of the hand. So palmar surface facing upward, so this would be supination, and the palmar surface facing downward, dorsum of the hand facing upward, so that would be the pronation, right? Then you have abduction and adduction. It's, it's simply adding to the body and going away from the body. So when you talk about the hands, so this is the abduction, when you open up your fingers like this, so they're going away from the body or away from the midline. So this is abduction. And when you, when you converge them or close them, so that would be adduction. So this is abduction, adduction, abduction, adduction, abduction, adduction, right? And then a supination, pronation, supination, pronation, then you have abduction and then you have adduction. So these are the movements which are taking place at the wrist joint. So the movements uh, um, of the lower limb, they're mainly taking place at three important joints. One is the hip joint, the other one is the knee joint, and the last one is the ankle joint. I'm not going to uh, go into the details how the articulation is basically being made. We'll be discussing it when we'll be talking about the anatomy of the lower limb. We'll be discussing the joints and their types in detail. So mainly, um, let's have the look for the movements of the knee, knee joint and ankle joint and the hip joint. So when you talk about the knee, so mainly the um, positions or mainly the, um, you know, the movements taking place on the knee joint are flexion, extension. Then we have um, internal rotation and the external rotation we call as a medial rotation and lateral rotation. So when you talk about the movements of the knee joint, so this is the flexion and we define it with the angle, like it's, it's a 90 degree angle, right? So uh, it's, 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 uh, the, if you talk about the angle with the ground surface, it's making a zero angle with the ground surface. So this is the angle uh, for the extension. So it can be a full extension or ex extension limited to 30 degree. So when you, when you talk about a full extension, that would be almost to the 90 degree like that. Okay, so this is the extension at the knee joint and this is the extension at the hip joint as well. And when you talk about the flexion rotation at the knee joint, so this is the flexion. Okay, so when you are making a 90 degree angle, this is the full flexion. So I'm going to repeat it again. The moments at the knee joint, this is flexion and this is a full flexion making 90 degree angle. And then we have the extension moment and almost the extension, full extension is about 90 degree. Another moment which is taking place on the knee joint is the internal rotation, also called as a medial rotation. And the other one is a lateral rotation or external rotation. So we have to do it in a flexion. First you have to flex your knee like this, uh, almost to the 90 degree, full flexion. And then you have to internally rotate it, right? So this is the medial or internal rotation of the knee joint. Now, when you talk about the lateral rotation or external rotation, so again, it would be in a flexion, and then you have to externally rotate, that's towards the outside. So this is the external or lateral rotation of the knee joint. So this is the dorsiflexion, when you're lifting your foot upward like this. So this is actually the dorsiflexion. Okay, because the dorsum of the foot is, you know, facing upward. So this is the dorsal, dorsal surface. And when you're lifting upward, this is dorsiflexion. And when you're lifting downward like this, so this is the plantar flexion. Okay, so I'm going to repeat it once again. We have four moments on the ankle joint, inversion, eversion, plantar flexion, and dorsiflexion. So this is inversion, right? This is eversion. And then we have dorsiflexion, like this, and then we have plantar flexion. We usually perform the extension and the flexion moments at the hip joint when the patient is in a supine uh, position, but the main concept still remains the same. Extension is moving forward, straightening up your legs, uh, limb, whole of the limb, and then flexion is like converging it to some degrees, maybe 30, 40, or 90 degrees.